Hare Krishna. So we are back again. Today is 9th July Saptami in Sri Mayapur Dham. Little cool atmosphere. And we will now move ahead with the financial series. So we discussed uh, what money is and how that is to be understood as value and how value can be created by anybody. Example, a teacher can create value by teaching students. A cook can create value by, you know, uh, making some nice preparations and selling them. And uh, a doctor can, uh, you know, give medical advice and consultations and do some treatment for people. So creating value is therefore what is the objective of uh, uh, basically economies and uh, how one can create some uh, income. So we'll now discuss uh, basically the movement of money. So money works in two ways, right? Or in this way, value works in two ways. There's an inflow and there's an outflow. And to make it very easily understood, there is a production on one hand and there is a consumable on the other hand. So production would mean your income strength, right? How do I create value? How do I have so-called passive income? How do I have active income? How do I have all these various uh, uh, streams of money coming in? So modern uh, society is structured in such a way that people are told that, look, education has value. Use that education to go and create uh, some employment for yourself or you know get a job somewhere and then create some active income now that may work that may not work that is uh, very subjective but the idea is that the marketplace values it to some degree and therefore they will pay some value for that and also people who have experience they'll pay some value for that and the same happens for people who are entrepreneurs who are businessmen who are investors right everybody is looking for value and therefore, uh, they will put some money there, right? Like you read all these big companies who are going for seed funding. Uh, seed funding basically means I'm looking for money. I have a very good idea, right? And people who have a lot of money, they want to make their money grow faster. So they say, okay, fine, we'll invest in your company for this many portion of ownership of your company. And so therefore, they will look what value can this create in the marketplace and then invest in it. So one part which is very important is to always understand how much is your production level, right? How much income am I getting, right? And how can I grow that? And basically that is a, something that one has to understand over time based on their nature, how to develop that. When you have a certain level of uh, money, then we will explain in the future videos of compounding and how compounding works through some examples to better understand how wealth also on its own is uh, enable, an enabler of creating more production, right? So money will create money, right? Money will give you return on its own. It will work by itself. But you have to understand how that works when we get into uh, another video. And that really handles majority your production part, right? And you will see as you get older, it is very hard for you maybe physically to really engage. We see this amongst older people. I see it especially people who are past 60. It's very hard to physically exert yourself or physically to really be involved in a lot of things. And uh, therefore, how wealth will build itself or how it will generate itself at that time will be based obviously on your experience and your knowledge, your wisdom and understanding of the financial system where things will work for you. So it is about understanding at different times what advantages you have, what values you can create. Like when you're young, you can maybe do a lot of more physical work and maximizing those opportunities or leveraging those so that you can create a better situation in regards to wealth and finance. And it's the same reason why children go to school at a young age, because they have the ability to do that. That's why people get you know married after that. Not that they get married when they're 60, 70, not that there's something wrong with it, but generally this is the society trend because you can do these things at that, at that age, you have the ability, the capacity to uh, absorb and take those responsibilities. So that really covers production, right? Now, the other part of the, the side is consumption, right? And from my experience, from all the knowledge I've got and what I've observed and what I've been taught, is that this is the most important aspect of financial wealth. Yes, production is definitely more important. 
uh, in one area in terms of if you don't have any production, what are you going to do? But you find a lot of people um, don't have necessarily an active or passive income. Still, they're surviving. But this is where, in terms of consumption, you can really, really uh, save a lot of money. And you can really understand uh, how much value is being uh, wasted, how much value uh, can be uh, preserved, right? So therefore, when it comes to consumption, especially for devotees, uh, being sense controlled, being regulated, uh, uh, you know, controlling the controlling your lifestyle, right? And having goals set is very important to be able to fine tune consumption, right? So we will find, especially uh, if you look at the modern, current, uh, contemporary situation, a lot of people who are working in this will take big amounts of loans. You know, I need to build my house. I need to get a good vehicle. I need to have the latest phone. All these things are well and understood. But you will find that a lot of these are psychological uh, expectations people have imposed very heavily on themselves. And therefore, in order to fulfill that, not understanding the financial system, they will take these big amounts of loans to pay them off. And you actually do a computation. You realize by the time that you've paid off the loan, you've almost paid two to three times the value of that property. Now, just as an example, I know people say, okay, by that time, the value may have increased, might not have increased. That is very subjective. But the the effort and struggle, the psychological wear and tear that that has, nobody talks about that. People really struggle. People have to do all types of uh, sinful, all types of maybe degraded activities in order to just get those done and say, okay, fine, that I've now built this uh, you know, house or I've paid off this car. And uh, you find that they get stuck only with that, right? And that house you're living in is not creating any wealth. So uh, you're not really uh, looking at the full picture when it comes to creating wealth by controlling your consumption. So therefore, when you're dealing with uh, loans, when you're dealing with borrowings, you have to be very, 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 very well versed with the effect of it on your psychology, on your emotional well-being, on your financial well-being, on your professional well-being, and on your social well-being. Because what happens is that in order to serve that need of repayments, you have to sacrifice on a lot of fronts. And it always costs more. And it always creates more complexities with time. And many of the times we find that value is actually not generated at a much higher level, right? Because when you have money, there's a very strong level for you to be able to do compounding or if you have some wealth, but real estate sometimes doesn't really go in that way, or especially motor vehicles, they depreciate at the first year, you've already lost 25%. So as you're paying interest, you're actually paying twice the value of the car and the car by the time you've paid twice the value, it's actually has no value. So it's not very intelligent to do that, but it doesn't mean that you can't do it. This is just one example, but the real, real secret, especially for consumption, is what we're going to go into much detail is actually the concept of budgeting. Now, if you look at any big corporate, you, know, you look at any uh, national institution, you look at governments, they all have something called as a budget. And now conceptually, everybody understands this, how much is coming in versus how much is going out. That's my net, a balance that's left, that's available for saving, holiday funds, emergency funds, and the like. But if you look at any governmental budget, they always focus on how to increase the production aspect. They very rarely talk about decreasing the consumption aspect, right? This is one is because inflation is there. Your money loses value with time. So you need more money now for the same thing. Two is that there is no concept of sense control. There is no concept of becoming more efficient and uh, effective in creating value for money because there is this concept of greed and corruption, right? And basically, the same works also on an individual level, also on a corporate level. That without budgeting, 
you really cannot know whether you're going towards your goal you really cannot know where your money is going why is it going there and how much of it is going there right people say okay i spend maybe 10000 on food example right? just let's take 10000 rupees a month right okay what are you spending it on are you spending it on flour are you spending it on milk are you spending it on uh, ghee are you spending it on cheese right these are just examples so is there anything i can do maybe to have a more sense controlled life or more regulated better healthier life where i will not have to incur all these costs or can i get something that's better quality which i'll have to use a less amount these are just tiny examples of how you can it's called value engineering right how do we engineer the situation or optimize it to increase the value so how can you value engineer your budget to actually save more money to restrict yourself from overspending money and to ensure that what you're spending on is giving you the right value so these are the three main criteria that you focus on and you will find that a high majority of people who always want to make money all right or who are struggling to make money don't have budgets they have a conceptual idea they say yeah okay around like this much but if you ask anybody like who are walking today and say okay today is 9th july how much have you spent out of your monthly budget no idea how much do you have left for your budget okay let's say taxes are going up today right or let's say now there's a new additional cost because there's a new requirement that has come up in your life how much of your budget is left are you going to increase amount of money that you have for your budget or are you going to sacrifice one thing to accommodate this new requirement no idea why because we do not give that system of budgeting value so you must understand in order to create wealth to create generational wealth you must understand the value of budgeting and how important it is to go to the granular level not on the you know uh, landscape level where you're just looking at it from a very high overview bird's eye view you have to go into it granular level that means understanding every single rupee or every single pound where is it going how is it going every month observing those you don't have to become a financial analyst and start looking at charts and this and that but it's about understanding where the money is going why is it going in those different areas and learning how to conserve that to preserve that and to see if there's value being created or if there's an unnecessary overspend without this it is very very almost close to i would say impossible for someone to create wealth right and uh, preserve that wealth and to ensure that that wealth is not misused because these are the habits that have to be maintained the, on this entire journey right and they have to be passed on to other generations this is how corporates work this is how governments work this is right there in front of us it's not that it's not there it's in the obvious but we have not been taught to value this instead we have been given this knowledge and this system of society which is called consumerism where you just told live lavishly spend lavishly right on all these different types of environments such as social networks where everybody is looking at one another and saying okay are they doing better than me am i doing better than them and using those as measuring sticks in order to say that that is my value but for a devotee his value is in understanding that he is part and parcel of krishna that i am part of this bigger creation i am part of this bigger system and because i am part of that that's my value right like uh, the example given in lord ramayana the small squirrel picked you know the stone according to its capacity and lord hanuman carried a bigger stone according to his capacity but lord ram was pleased because people were contributing or sorry the living entities were contributing according to their capacity so our value is according to our capacity and requirements and therefore humility therefore being satisfied yeah uh, con- being content uh, not con- yeah being contempt right or not sorry not contempt content being content is very very important when you're building wealth if you're always going to be in a competitive mindset you're always going to be in a mindset that where you need to show your superiority you need to establish your worth right then that will get in the way of you creating wealth proverbs says many times ambition is the enemy of success right and success cannot exist without failure right so it is very very important to understand this conceptually that there is an aspect of production and how it works and how it changes with time and understanding what your nature will support you in creating 
and very very importantly understanding consumption and tracking that consumption and seeing the value of that consumption and therefore having this in mind then it is very easy to be able to measure how far am i from my goal how close am i to my goal is my goal realistic does it need to be changed is there some factors i have not considered these are very very basic requirements of understanding you do not need to be very highly skilled in finance or that but you need to understand this thoroughly and realize this knowledge otherwise knowing it every lot of people know a lot of things but you must understand and realize this to be able to actually start creating that generational wealth and being satisfied and being patient in order to build that so the next few videos will discuss on terms of uh, some concepts and uh, eventually i'm not very skilled on the on the Life. video so after getting some help i will show you up some practical examples of budgeting and uh, of the different various uh, financial uh, uh, knowledge that i can show on excel and give some conceptual understandings but till then uh, i will just post some other videos of different concepts so i hope that works and uh, if you find this has some value please share it and please also give me your feedback for any continuous improvement Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.